What's up guys, have you ever wondered how to rehab a rental property, build a rental portfolio, and use zero dollars of your own money? I'm here to show you how to rehab that property effectively using the burst strategy so you have zero dollars out of pocket. What's up guys, Lucas with Faster Freedom here, Gates behind the camera. We're at a most recent rental that we just bought, and I'm gonna show you guys how to rehab this house. Come on in. First, let's take a look around the outside of the house. This is the perfect house we like to rehab for our rentals. As you'll see, all in will be under 20 grain on this rehab. Um, the siding and the roof is in perfect condition, so we won't have to touch that. The landscaping is pretty good too. We'll just shape up some of these bushes and add some rock, because uh, we like rock, because it's low maintenance. Driveway looks great here. Just maybe fill a couple of these cracks with some crack filler, but other than that, it's in great shape. The house is missing some soffit, but on a rental, we're probably not gonna worry about that. If we were retailing this house, we would probably add soffits. Come on around to the back patio. As you can see, it's in pretty good shape as well. It does have a few privacy trees. And for a rental standpoint, we'd probably just get rid of those because we don't wanna have to deal with them maintenance wise. As you can see with the backyard, uh, it's not fenced. We do like most of our yards to be fenced, but we're not gonna go ahead and add a fence if it's not already there. It's just gonna limit some of our renter pool if they have a dog that need a fenced in yard. Two things to notice on this side of the house. One is the below grade electric service, which is awesome. Um, this house was only built about 15 years ago. So the below grade electric service definitely minimizes maintenance with limbs falling on your say above grade like electric service. Um, another thing to notice is the AC. Um, it was probably installed when the house was built uh, about 15 years ago, so it probably has some life left. I would say five to 10 years. We would most likely get our HVAC technician over here to, to take a look at it and see how long we got left. And if it's less than five years, go ahead and replace that now so we're not coming out of cash flow later. All right, guys, let's go inside. As you notice, uh, the city put a keep out uninhabitable sticker on our front door, but uh, I think that's only because we haven't got water transferred into our name yet. All right, guys, welcome in to the entry room slash living room. Uh, again, this house is only 15 years old, so it's in pretty good condition. Hardwood floors are pretty good, except for the kitchen. So over here, we had some type of either dishwasher leak or refriger refrigerator water supply leak, and um, it started buckling up the hardwood floors. So we got a couple options here. Um, the least expensive would be to demo just the hardwood floor in the kitchen area and put a ceramic tile or a vinyl plank and then keep all the hardwood throughout the rest of the house. If we demo this and start to notice some mold or something under the under the hardwood, we're gonna have to rip it up throughout the whole house, and then we'll put vinyl plank throughout the whole house, one, le one level floor. For a rental, these kitchen cabinets are pretty much perfect for us. Uh, we probably would add some hardware and door poles on there to, to limit the amount of, of fingerprints and touches on the cabinets. Uh, a lot of times we like stainless steel appliances in ours, but if these work good and clean up nice, we'll probably keep the white ones. Um, countertop wise, uh, we do like going with a little nicer countertop, especially since this rent will be on the higher end of our market. So we might replace the countertops with a, with a granite or a better looking Formica. The light fixtures in this place are pretty nice. I bet we'd end up keeping them all, cleaning them up and replacing all the light bulbs. All right guys, come on down the hallway. Bedroom number one, um, beautiful two-tone paint job that we obviously gonna paint the whole house, um, but we're gonna replace the carpet in here. And that's about it. We provide our tenants with blinds. So if these blinds are in good shape and clean up nice, we'll, we'll keep them in place. Into bathroom number one, obviously you can see this is one um, of the areas of the house that needs the most attention. Uh, there was some sort of backup that happened. Um, I'm gonna replace the toilet 
cable the sewer lateral and maybe give that a quick camera just to see if there's any damage that we need to fix before we get a tenant in here. Um, probably keep the shower insert, maybe replace the hardware, obviously replace the toilet. Um, a new vanity would look great in here. I just not sure it needs it. These are the same cabinets as in the kitchen. So we could uh, add some hardware here, replace the faucet. I think everything would clean up pretty nice. Obviously that broom's not gonna clean up the, the vinyl uh, as much as we'd like to. So uh, we're gonna replace that vinyl with either some sheet vinyl, ceramic tile, or luxury vinyl plank. All right guys, let's go into bedroom number two. Uh, excellent two-tone paint job here, green and pink, that we would go with one neutral color throughout the whole house. Um, box of hats here, this one with the tag still on it if, if anybody wants it. Um, other than that, this is just like bedroom one. We're gonna replace the carpet with a new carpet and pad. Six panel doors look great. Um, I don't even know if we'd paint them. Uh, and the hardware on the doors too is perfect, nice and modern, and we keep probably that all in place. Bedroom number three here. This is the master bedroom. It's got the uh, trade ceilings. Um, it's a great size. Um, in this part of the living space, we probably just replace the carpet as we did in the other bedrooms. And then we'll talk about what we're gonna do in the master bathroom here. Come on in. All right guys, similar situation with what's going on with the toilets as in the first bathroom we saw. So we would replace that again, cable and camera, the sewer lateral, make sure nothing crazy is going on there. We don't have a backup in the future. Um, shower, shower's pretty nasty at the moment. Um, I think we would probably see if that cleaned up. Um, it would take a lot of cleaning up, but it might be worth it being all that that one piece fiberglass insert. We like to keep those, but if not, we, we would rip it out, put in a shower pan, and then tile the walls. Vanity, same thing as in the other bathroom. Um, put a, put a um, hardware on it and a new faucet and probably keep the mirror and light. We would do the same floor here as we did in the other bathroom, probably some sort of a tile or luxury vinyl plank. We're back in bedroom number one, looking at a closet. Um, pretty simple closet, but we like to give these type of wire shelves to our tenants. They can hang stuff on them or put shoes up on top. Just give them something to use inside the closet instead of it being just a, a blank cavity. All right guys, let's go in the laundry room and then we'll go downstairs into the finished basement. It's a great laundry room. It's already got ceramic tile um, and, and great laundry hookups. We do not supply our tenants with washer and dryer. Uh, we leave that on them. A couple houses have inherited really nice washer and dryers and we will keep them, but we'll charge the tenants a little more if they want to keep them in the house per month. This house does have a garage and um, it does have a garage opener. If the house does have a garage and opener, we like to make sure that we supply our tenants with at least one remote if it's a one car garage and then two remotes if it's a two car garage. All right guys, down in the finished basement, as you can see the drywall is cut out throughout the whole basement almost, um, halfway up. We believe that is from uh, a leak that we were talking about in the kitchen, uh, either with the dishwasher or uh, the water supply line on the refrigerator. It also could be the, the sewer backup that we were talking about, but the foundation looks to be in great shape behind the, the studs. So um, we're gonna cut out any leftover mold that we see, but then we'll refinish this basement and it'll add probably a couple hundred bucks a month to our rental, rental rate. As you can see, there's some areas like right here, that have a little mold that haven't been cut out, we'll just go ahead and bring that all the way up, so just to cover our ass. So flooring in our finished basements and our rentals. Um, a lot of people in their personal homes like to have carpet just because it feels warmer in the basement, but if we're finishing out a basement or if it's already finished, we like to go with our luxury vinyl plank. That way if there is ever any, actually when there is some sort of moisture or, or water problem in the basement, 
that uh, you don't have to worry about the flooring needing to be replaced. You can just clean it up and move on. All right guys, come on into this sleeping area. Now there's two sleeping areas in this basement and I call it a sleeping area because as you notice, it does not have an egress window. Uh, check with your municipality on what an egress window size needs to be, but um, this technically is still only a three bedroom and that's all on the main level because you can't get out of any of the windows in the basement. Um, you can market this for rent as a sleeping area or as you see, there's another sleeping area down here. Right here, you got the water shut off. Um, just important to know where it's at. I'm actually gonna shut it off. It actually is shut off, that's good. Um, whenever you move a tenant in and walk, walk them through the house to point out all the big, bigger things that could happen, uh, maintenance related and pointing out the water shutoff valve is extremely important when walking your tenant through the house. Newer 200 amp electric panel, so shouldn't have any issues there for a long time. So we got the water heater and the furnace and a coil in here. Um, as you can see, it's an all electric system, so no natural gas in this house. Um, water heater looks great. The furnace actually looks pretty good here too, so I'm guessing we can save the AC outside. Again, just get your HVAC technician in here to do a quick, quick cleaning service and then um, hopefully get you another 10 years out of your system. As you can see, uh, with the finished basement, it comes with light switches, uh, electrical wires, and receptacles. Uh, before we put this uh, piece of drywall up, we want to make sure that all this was done to code and then we're not covering up any mistakes that the homeowner made previous to us. Bathroom number three is in the finished basement. Uh, come on in here and I'll show you what, what we do being a rental for us. All right, for some reason they didn't cut out the drywall here and on this side. So we would go ahead and cut that out, make sure we're not leaving any mold left over. Um, the floor is in good shape, it's just kind of ugly. So we'd probably replace the floor or at least maybe lay over top of it with a, with a sheet vinyl. Um, the shower enclosure is in pretty good shape. We would leave that, especially being a basement bathroom. And then maybe just go ahead and replace the toilet and um, vanity and mirror and light, in pretty good shape. So we'd probably leave most of this down here, except for the mold and the drywalls. Here is sleeping area number two in the basement. Um, still calling it a sleeping area because we don't have egress windows. We do have windows, which is nice for natural light, but uh, you can't consider this a bedroom because they're not egress. Uh, in this bed, uh, sleeping area is the sump pump, which is awesome to have a sump pump in your basement for uh, alleviating some of that hydrostatic pressure. Um, make sure your sump pump runs though before you put a tenant in. It might be good practice just to go ahead and swap out that pump because they're only 80 to 100 bucks. All right guys, now let's talk about a few things that municipality inspectors will look for before you're able to move a tenant in. So this particular municipality in this house does not require an occupancy inspection. So check with your local municipality uh, on which municipalities have occupancy inspections or, or don't. Um, also get a list of what their code violations are. So a couple things that I'm thinking off the top of my head for, for any of you guys who are doing your first rental or fifth rental or 50th rental, um, GFIs. So on top of your countertops in your kitchens, your, your wet bars, your bathrooms have to be GFI protected. So that's one thing that inspectors are gonna eat you guys up for. Um, another thing is uh, smoke detectors. Check your local code for smoke detectors. Um, normally it's one on each level one in each bathroom, I'm sorry, one in each bedroom, and then also one in the hallways 10 feet away from each bedroom. Um, another thing that inspectors leach you guys up on are handrails, whether it's going outside to a patio on your front porch or going downstairs, make sure you have a graspable, graspable handrail and that it's secure. Another thing that occupancy inspectors check for are anti-tip devices on your stove. So uh, that's, in case maybe a kid was living in your house, a little kid, and he was jumping on maybe say this, and your stove tipped up like that, um, that's a violation. So there should be an anti-tip device on the back side of this that hooks into the wall and also latches or uh, cuffs around your uh, foot on the stove. Another thing inspectors will hit you guys for are if you're in an older house that you're rehabbing, 
and it's not grounded throughout the house and you put a three prong outlet in. Um, if it's not grounded, they'll make you take that out and put in a two prong outlet there. So on our rentals, we like to rehab a little higher uh, or a little, we like to go a little farther in the rehab uh, up front so we have less maintenance issues down the road. Another reason to go a little farther in your rehab up front is to get a higher appraisal. With doing the birth strategy, you need to be able to get a high appraisal so you can refi out and recapture all of your purchase price and rehab costs. Some examples of that would be going with new stainless steel appliances. This helps for two reasons. Um, you got new appliances, so they're less likely to have a maintenance issue in the near future. And also your appraisal appraiser will see those brand new appliances and take that into account. So we do supply refrigerators to all of our tenants. Uh, we like to go with the basic top and bottom refrigerator with no ice maker and no um, water dispenser and that just limits maintenance issues as well. So when you go ahead and put in new stainless steel appliances, say you put in new granite countertops, uh, you put in new luxury vinyl plank or ceramic tile, not only does this bulletproof your house for maintenance issues, not only does it help you get a better appraisal, a higher appraisal, but it also will get you the best highest paying tenant faster. We talked about this a little bit, but your bigot biggest ticket items in this house is probably your HVAC, uh, your roof, your windows. Uh, just make sure you have a professional check those items out. And if they only think you got one or two or three years left, maybe even five years, go ahead and replace those up front so you're not dipping into your cash flow later to replace them. All right, so if this is your first rental rehab, um, you're probably just looking to get the rehab done and get a tenant moved in, which is great. That's what I thought about on my first rental rehab. As you move forward and do your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, your 10th, your 50th, start to systemize your design choices and your paint colors. So you have a template. Say you have a rental template for every house. Not only does it help you get the rehabs done quicker and your subcontractors on the same page as you, but it also helps with say uh, a maintenance item comes up, a maintenance issue comes up in one of those houses down the road and you have the paint already, you have the flooring to replace it already, you have the light fixture, um, you know exactly what goes in each house, it just it helps everyone out in the long run. On a house like this, there's not a lot of different subcontractors that you're gonna need, but maybe you do come across a house that has some, some bigger issues, but uh, even on a house like this, me personally, I'm not gonna be doing hardly any of the work, if any of the work. So on a house like this, you're gonna need a painter, someone to do uh, some drywall work for you, some flooring, and then a miscellaneous handyman. Um, finding these people can be very difficult. Uh, me and my business partner went through a lot of trial and error to get the right contractors on board, and now we just use the same ones for every rental rehab. Um, we're able to use the same ones because when we finally found someone that we liked, we made sure we paid them on time, we paid them what we owed them, and we always treated them uh, with respect. We found these contractors mainly from referrals from other investors in our area. Uh, you gotta be careful a little bit because a lot of investors don't wanna give up their best contractors, but uh, they'll give up some. And then other ways to find good contractors are Facebook groups, local Facebook groups for investors, uh, meetup groups, um, Craigslist, we found a couple, just be wary of Craigslist a little bit. Also ask your other contractors that you know are good if they have a buddy that does, say, painting. So if you got a good drywaller, ask him if he's got a good taper. Ask him if he knows of a good painter. Ask him if he knows of a good floor guy. So a house like this is perfect for the burst strategy. It's about 15 to 20 grand rehab, and that's exactly what we look for. 20 grand and under, maybe 25 grand and under in a, in a newer house, say, built in the last 40 to 50 years. This one in particular was built in the last 15 years, which is great, but um, a newer house that not a huge rehab, you're gonna run into a lot less surprises as you go throughout your rehab. Thus, you'll have a lot a uh, better chance to stay on budget and recapture all of your money on the back end when you refinance. So this particular house is what I would consider a high-end rental in our market. It'll probably rent for about 1,650 bucks a month. Um, make sure you're looking at that when you pick out the finishes for your rehab. Um, 
look at other comps in the area, rental properties that are for lease. Uh, Zillow is a great place for, to look at uh, other rentals and make sure your finishes are at par or even a little better than what's out there on the market so you get a leg up on your competition. So quick numbers on this house. So let's say this house appraises for $200,000 after the rehab. The bank will give us a loan for about $150,000 to $160,000. That's 75% to 80%. Um, so with the rehab cost, $20,000 and the purchase costs, $125,000. We're all into this property for about $145,000. So we'll be able to recapture all of our rehab and purchase costs uh, after this house is appraised and the bank gives us that loan. Rent on this particular house is about $1,650 a month. So that is uh, a great spread with a $145,000 loan, $150,000 loan especially because we consider this uh, one of our higher end rentals. This house will rent for about 1,650 bucks a month uh, after all expenses, including your loan payment on your $145,000 loan. Uh, this should cash flow your, your benchmark of $200 a month. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something with this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up if you did and subscribe below. Fast to freedom. See you guys.